Good evening. I'd like to call the April 5th, 2021 David County Commissioner's meeting to order. At this time, I would ask Commissioner Jones to move his indication. Let us pray. Father, we come here tonight um, in awe of the season that we have just celebrated, uh, the Easter season, Father, and what it represents, the, the sacrificial giving of oneself to others. Father, may tonight we come into this meeting with that same belief and that same urgency to serve our neighbors and to serve our community. Father, we thank you for uh, your mercy. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. We seek wisdom tonight to do what you have called us to do. Father, we thank you for our, the, the men and women that serve us every day in our law enforcement, in our fire departments, Father, in our EMS, in our schools, Father, Bless them, protect them, and Father, we thank you for them. Father, uh, the sheriff told me on the way in that there's a major accident on I-40 near the, uh, and so Lord, we pray for, uh, we pray for safety, we pray for healing, we pray for peace uh, in that situation, we pray for uh, a lack of a loss of life, Father, there. We pray for those that are there keeping the road safe. And so, Lord, uh, we just lay that all in your hands. Father, we just ask you, Lord, to just instill in us a desire in our community to seek freedom, to seek liberty, and, Father, uh, to seek truth. So, Lord, tonight... We will give you praise, glory, and honor that you're due. And we pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. told I need to speak into this thing a little more sternly. All right, at this time, uh, we will go to our ethics and conflict disclosure. I will ask Mr. Vogler to read that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160A-86 and David County Board of County Commissioners Code of Ethics adopted December the 2nd, 2019, I've asked each of you before you adopt the agenda if there's any actual, potential, or perceived conflicts of interest with respect to any matter on the proposed agenda, which will come before the board tonight for a vote. If so, please speak up and let the board know at this time before the agenda is adopted. Seeing no one speak up, I conclude there's no actual potential or perceived conflicts of interest by any board member. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Blake, Commissioner Blakely is not here this evening, so any votes taken tonight will be no greater than four voting. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. Chairman, uh, before we do that, I have a question. Uh, the agenda uh, that I see here uh, before us is different from the agenda that I have that I looked at uh, early this morning. Uh, there's been an ad item added, uh, and that is uh, under presentations, item four, Cardinal Innovations. The only thing I ask there is, is uh, before I would make a motion to approve the agenda, is this an action item? Not unless we wish it to be. It's just for information. Okay, perfect. Um, I, I, actually, sir, if, if, the, if the board is, um, it, it's not something that has to be done tonight. If the board is comfortable doing it tonight, 
the board can take action tonight. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just say this. I would ask that we defer this item. I, I, other than what whoever's going to present, I haven't heard a word. I haven't heard a word about it. Uh, so, well, so, Mr. Chairman, if I may, sure. Uh, so, just uh, we. This was something again that was uh, uh, made reference to in a memo to the board at the end of last week. Um, I, I know it was you know very small fine print, but. Um, it's uh, it's something that uh, you know it, it decision can be deferred. It's, it's not it, it, if the board if at some point takes action on it and approves it, it can be retroactive. Uh, but we just wanted to uh, try to bring it to the board's uh, attention uh, as soon as we could. Uh, that's a, and that's okay. I get it. That's okay. Are there documents that we need to review? Uh, Your memo had no documents with them. It was just an indication that you might be. There, uh, there, there was something we, we received uh, after I sent that memo out. Uh, we received it um, over the weekend, and staff reviewed it this morning with our attorney, and then uh, we sent that out this afternoon. Uh, so again, I understand. I apologize for for the uh, the short notice, but uh, just wanted to go and bring it to your attention as soon as we could. I haven't seen the document, Mr. Chairman. So I, I'm okay with the presentation, and I would make a motion to adopt the agenda as presented, to, but just to defer that action item to next month. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make that motion. Okay. We have a motion to somewhat alter the agenda. Uh, just no action will be taken on item four. Uh, well, under presentations, item four. Would someone like to second that? I second that. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor of altering the agenda to for presentation only with no action taken on item seven presentations item number four, raise your hand. Okay. All right, now entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with that change. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Raise your hand. That is adopted. Okay, thank you. All right, we move to public comment period. Uh, Mr. Vogel, do we have anyone signed up? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, we have three individuals signed up for public comment. This is the time in which the public has an opportunity to come forward and comment on governmental business. Uh, as the board has Prove me to be the timekeeper. I will be keeping time. We'll be showing you uh, when you have two minutes remaining, one minute remaining, 30 seconds remaining when you need to stop. Uh, so if you would be cognizant of those sheets that I will be holding up. Uh, as I say, it's a public comment. Therefore, you have an ability to come and comment on anything you wish to comment on. It's not a exchange of ideas or or questioning of the board vote in which you ask the question, they respond back. So with that said, the first individual that we have is Don Rhodes. If you'll come up to the podium, state your name so that it'll go on the record, uh, on the reporting, so that we've got that. So my name is Don Rhodes, and I'm just a concerned citizen of David County. If you guys remember, I spoke to you last month. My concerns that I brought before you were the fact that you could be changing MCOs. There are some counties that are changing MCOs. Um, this has happened before. What I presented last time is that you make a decision based on some info from the citizens of David County that receive services, people without intellectual disabilities, people with substance abuse and, and mental illness. Um, that is specifically all I asked for last time. If you'll remember, before I sat down, I asked, I was telling you that I did not ask that you sever your relationship with Cardinal. I was just asking for input from the residents. So I took it upon myself to do a survey of the residents I know in David County. I happen to know I've come across 46 resident families, including myself, and uh, I'm a longtime employee I work for Centerpoint, I work for Monarch, I've been in the field 30 years, so I know a lot of people. I would like to present to you tonight that I did this survey, there were 16 questions, and I'm gonna finish with the last three. Overall, how satisfied are you with Cardinal Services? 
I would like to say that 46 of 46 families are very satisfied with Cardinal Services. What, would you, what, what do you like about Cardinal Services? Prompt follow-up, paying attention to my family, care, care coordinator support and services for my family. And what would you like to see changed? Absolutely nothing. The 46 families I spoke to, which by no means represents all the families in this county that receive services, but I don't know how you would get 100% participation in a survey, that just doesn't happen. But I would like to say that overall, the people I spoke with are exceptionally satisfied with Cardinal. I am satisfied with Cardinal. I would like to ask that you consider what I presented tonight before you make a decision to leave with Cardinal. And I would like to say that I, we think you should stay with Cardinal. Thank you. Thank you. Next individual that has signed up is David Smith. Good evening. We're at a crossroads in our community. Growth is coming fast. Fortunately, questions about the desired outcome have been asked and answered in the form of Davie County's strategic plan. Yet the advent of recent rezoning requests has brought to light a planning disparity that we now face in Davie County. Our strategic plan's vision statement, a key component of our vision is a Davie County celebrating its rural heritage and enhancing its quality of life. It is why Davie County is so desirable to newcomers. It is also what is being lost by current development patterns. We're facing solar farms, high density housing, and new industrial, commercial, and residential development, and all beg the question, how will quality of life issues like traffic control, schools, health, safety, parks, open space, and trees be addressed? Will we continue our landscape of berm mentality that gives a false sense of rural character? a residential tax base that costs more to provide the services than what we currently make? And how will we avoid unsightly and congested commercial strip development along US 158, Farmington Road, Redland Road, and others to mention? We must have a design-based plan that better addresses these issues with concrete examples of excellence, thus avoiding the current status quo. I believe growth can be positive and is a definitive sign of community vibrancy. My issue with the current growth landscape is really one of vision, beauty, design, aesthetics, and Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, I define, is a closed silo mentality not allowing for other ideas, innovation, or vision beyond its own. I believe that Davie County deserves excellence, and we're not getting excellence. But instead, mediocrity passed off as excellence. These issues, although come from well-intentioned groups and individuals have created their own flavor of Kool-Aid and have for too long lulled the Davie County populace with the false idea that their Kool-Aid is the only Kool-Aid for Davie County. We're in need of a different set of flavors, ideas, and visions to deal with the myriad of opportunities that we are facing and going to face in the near future. We need a bold vision that expects excellence in growth development. Davie County owes no developer or landowner anything. We should demand excellence. So I implore you, the county commission, to open up your silo and let new flavors and ideas emerge. I challenge you to seize a bold vision that affords more for Davie County than a spruced up governmental warehouse, chain link fences, enclosed commercial development, and a myopic cookie cutter housing development pattern. We should be building and developing places for the future generations to hold sacred and want to preserve, i.e. downtown Moxville. Yet of the new developments of recent note, do you think there will be a desire to preserve them? Do you think that a Walmart shopping center or the new government center complex will be declared a historic preservation landmark in the future? Yet it could have been, it could have been. Thank you. Chairman, the last individual who has signed up uh, has a handwriting very similar to mine, it looks like. His first name is Andrew, and his last name is either D A E U M S or D A. It's in fact, it's okay. poor, pen, poor penmanship. Okay. Well, hey, as I said, yeah. it's almost as good as mine. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Andrew Backus. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. I, I got involved with the uh, Davie County Comprehensive Plan uh, during the uh, 
the Howell Farm solar issue, and I read it cover to cover, and I thought it was an excellent plan, as I've stated in previous meetings. My comments tonight are simply to ask, um, what is the status of the update to the comprehensive plan? I understand that it was to undergo an annual update, and that would have been in December of 2020, and now we're one quarter hence, uh, notwithstanding that the COVID environment has certainly impacted that. Uh, but I'm just wondering what will be put out with regard to the annual review of the comprehensive plan? How can the citizens engage in the comprehensive plan? And any information in that regard would certainly be welcome because there are citizens that want to participate. And I'd ask that you include that in some form or on a future agenda or in a manner that you deem appropriate. Uh, thanks for your service and thank you. And Mr. Chair, that is the last of the individual who signed up. All right, thanks for those comments. Okay, next we have four presentations. The first one is from um, on the Davy Youth Complex, and uh, I think Mr. Riddle was planning to present. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Jerry Riddle, Davy American Little League. Um, I want to thank y'all for um, having me tonight. I also want to thank you for the past support of the youth complex and Davy Little League, as well as <clears throat> entrusting us with 38 acres uh, of land that the county owns that we maintain. Um, we take that to heart and we take it very seriously. And we've made a lot of changes in the last few years, and that's uh, a lot about this, what the presentation is about. Um, so background from the league, um, it's been going about 45 years. The complex uh, was built on a foul water grant uh, 37 years ago. About 18,000 boys and girls from Davie counties went through the league over time. Uh, we're almost ready to hit some of the third generations. Um, our goals are pretty simple, you know, baseball, softball um, for the kids in Davie County. Um, county funding, 2018, $3,600, 2019, 2020, zero. Uh, we maintain the four complex fields and we maintain North Davie, and we count that in our complex. We keep up the North Davie softball field, Collett and Smith Grove. Um, volunteers is, what drives us. We wouldn't get through without volunteers. Uh, we pay to mow the complex and concession stand manager and worker, and that's it. Everything else we do, we do through volunteers, unless it's a major project um, and it's out of our, like putting up lights, that's out of what we can do, but uh, we try to do it all. Um, <clears throat> people that utilize the complex, North Davie Middle School Baseball and Softball, Davie High Softball, Cross country from Davy and uh, North Davy. Legion last year when the Manto was shut down, they came to play in our place some. Uh, of our registered players in 2020, 76 scholarship players. So um, through Little League bylaws, we do not, uh, if you can't pay, we find a way to, you know, to cover. <clears throat> so we use um, some of our sponsorship money, and then we have uh, people in the community help us with those individuals that need help. Um, the ages we serve, keep all up through um, 16. Um, the Challenger Division is a special division. It has um, physically and intellectually challenged uh, ages four to adults. Um, that is part of our organization as well. Um, we expanded, I took over the complex and the Little League board in 2019, um, a way to generate revenue. Um, we had rented the complex a couple of times to other travel organizations, but we basically start, started doing it ourselves. So um, we ran 300, 3,000 players through the complex in 2020. Um, 47 cities across North Carolina, Virginia, 264 teams, and that was in 11 weeks because uh, we didn't start till June because of COVID. 
Um, we host the TOC tournament from our district. Fall and spring last year, we had 585 players from Davie County. Um, there's a picture of the session stand and uh, a busy weekend. Um, some people was parked all the way to the gate. <clears throat> Improvements uh, that we've completed since um, fall of 2019, uh, new dugout roofs. Uh, it's really been a big thing that the Harper v. Class, the high schools, did all the work for us, and we just bought the materials. Uh, it's a good partnership. They're continuing to work there now and some other projects. We put uh, new sprinkler system, new glass on one of our fields, and that's sod. It's uh, really beautiful, and I got some pictures coming up. Uh, the lights uh, for Ashley, the three small fields, Ashley Farm Bureau, JME, it's a debt service law to 171. Uh, we installed those last winter sprinkler system we did this past winter uh, for the other two small fields getting ready to try to sod those and bring those up to speed uh, we lighted our batting cages uh, at a cost of about five thousand dollars about a month ago pictures on the left top is Ashley um, the bottom is when we was laying sod and that's what they look like when we was done so uh, about $28,000 was pretty well spent money, looks like to me. Um, top left is our lighted batting cages now. That's our new lights on our small fields. Makes a huge difference. Um, any idea how I get the video to play? Sometimes when you put lights in in Farmington, you have to move a lot of rock. Um, thanks to Jason Toro for helping us swallow some of that cost. Um, the sod um, upcoming projects that we're working on and have on, have on the docket, uh, new sod for the two small fields, estimated cost $17,800. Um, we're going we're gonna to have to address a well system. The water field is going to kill us when we get all the grass done. Um, so we're looking at a well system. Uh, new lights for uh, Zach Eight right. Zach H. Wright Field, which is the large baseball field. I received a quote a couple of days ago. It's $162,000. Those lights were put up 39, 39 years ago. The difference between that field and those three is, is just, it, they're just really not safe. Uh, some of the poles are wood and they're bowing and moving and they really need to be updated. Um, a new building, we have a batting cage and bullpen area that we've light it up, but really um, down the road, we're looking at a 170 by 85 facility indoor that would be carpet, heated, <coughs> air conditioned, that our, our kids in Davie County could use, plus the high school and all the middle schools through the winter. It would make a huge difference um, for them and for us to have a place in the winter time to practice and get better. Uh, sprinkler system for Zach H. Wright, um, that's on the list before it gets grass, and it's 21.3. That's just material, and that's just grass. The paving, uh, everything we have is, uh, we don't have anything really paid. Um, we're looking at about 120 spots with a handicap ramp to try to make it more accessible for some of our grandparents and, and people that have trouble. Thank, uh, the school system, Jeff Wallace, the school system works very closely with us. They allow us access to most of the school fields at a, a very a cost we can afford. Um, some of the fields are in, not maintained, so we, we pinch in money to help them so that we have a place to practice this up to Little League standards. We strive to improve the complex and other county-owned fields to ensure it's safe and just take pride in the county. Um, 
we raised about forty-five thousand uh, dollars last spring. I think we're on track to do about the same this year. Um, we have an added rifle ticket. Riddle Tractor uh, has been good enough to give us a couple of pieces of equipment, and we hope to raise some money there as well to help fix um, and update our facility. Our cost breakdown. Um, this is basically our budget for 2021. Uh, the big ticket items are on there. We're looking at about 221,000 debt service, concession stand, debt service lights, utilities, mowing, little league fees, complex insurance, uniforms, all down through the list. So that's that's the most of the budget at about $150,000 there. Here's what we have in the cost per player at Davy Little League. Shirts, hats, all the way down to maintenance, utilities, umpires broke out, 126 to 132. Um, so in with the number on the left-hand side, it's a $40 raffle fee that the parents buy up front. They sell the tickets, they get the $40 back. So <clears throat> they're really playing for less than what it costs us to play. Um, gives them a chance to recoup some of their money. Um, this is the um, fees from other leagues um, in our area, the Nationals. East Chatham fees are a little lower, they're county run. Uh, everybody else is <coughs> the little leagues at King, Northwest, um, Kernersville. We're the second largest little league in District 2 behind Kernersville. I do really appreciate your support. Um, uh, any questions? Um, I have some questions for y'all. Um, what does it cost the county to insure the complex? Do y'all have any idea? The facility, building the lights, the batting cages, it's all county owned, maintained by us. I didn't know if y'all had any idea what that cost. We, we can certainly get it, but uh, I Robin, do you know that? Oh, top top of it, Mr. Chairman, it, we, we do have uh, you know, that property um, on our liability insurance. So, uh, you know, we, we have a number for the, our entire liability. We don't have it itemized for, for that property you know, available tonight. When I signed the agreement, and the, which is 18 years left on the thing, I was told we didn't have insurance. So we spend $5,400 a year to insure the building, the lights um, on our behalf. And that also covers North Davie if they're there playing or if somebody breaks in overnight. It's 24-7, 365 coverage. So if that's something we could give up, that's $5,400 a year that we're putting into it to cover it to make sure we're covered and the county's covered. If that's something we could drop, I'd certainly like to see that policy and know that the folks that's coming in, even if they break in, they're covered if they're injured. Ms. Riddle, we can certainly uh, continue that conversation and see what the particulars of our insurance. Obviously, as property owners, we, we have to maintain you know, a certain amount of liability, but it probably, it, it may not cover the, the full improvements and, and so forth, but we can continue that conversation. Absolutely, I'd appreciate that. Uh, also, um, I would ask the board, do you have any idea what it would cost um, if the Recreation Department took over and serviced 550 to 600 kids a year? Um, so, um, I just asked that question. Uh, that would probably be a question for Paul. Um, and maintain 38 acres. Just a question. Um, and question for y'all also, is there anything that us at DLL or the complex <clears throat> can do better? We always strive uh, to get better and, and get as much feedback as we can. So if there's something we can do better, I'd certainly like to know.
Well, I do appreciate your time. Appreciate you having me. Um, ultimately, I'm here because you know we have invested uh, a ton of money and dealt <coughs> updating a really nice facility to make it even better <coughs> at at with very little help um, money wise from the county. Um, we probably maintain. I don't know if there's a volunteer organization that maintains 38 acres and all we keep up, strictly volunteer. So <clears throat> I would ask that you would consider helping us financially so we can move our improvements along. Um, it's not just, uh, it's not our place, it's the county. So we care deeply about it and I know y'all do. So I really, really appreciate it if, uh, if we can find some money to help us. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't care. I don't have a question for you, but I, I do have a, I do have a couple of statements I'd like to make in terms of, of what, in, in general, uh, sports tourism does for David County. We talked a little bit about this uh, in, in past meetings and EDC events. Uh, as Mr. Riddle presented there, he said in 11, uh, from June to really the first week in November, they had over 3,000 players play at uh, the Dayton Youth Complex. Or, or Rich Park. Or, yes, yes. We, yeah, we, they we use did. multiple fields. Yeah. But the, the, issue is, the issue is what it's bringing to Dayton County. Uh, if you couple what they do with baseball and softball, we look at Truist Field with soccer, um, uh, we have lacrosse, we have volleyball, all of these things that, that uh, the RISE facility and others are, are, are going to bring to David County, they're actually doing it. They're actually implementing uh, the, the, the plan, so to speak, in terms of drawing people into David County to, to eat in our restaurants, stay in our hotels and uh, generate revenues and then go home. So they are doing they're doing a yeoman's job. I can just tell you, I, I, I have a grandson that plays little league baseball. Commissioner Blakely has a son that plays little league baseball. I have two granddaughters that play in that facility also. I see on a day-to-day -day basis their commitment not not to a little not to a little uh, world that they created for themselves, but for all the children and families of David County. Of all the organizations, Little League football, Little League baseball, and the Davy Youth Complex in terms of the broader spectrum of baseball and softball that they look at serves from the poor to the wealthy. They serve, as he, as Jerry indicated, we had 50 cities that came to Davie County and stayed and bought food and uh, generated tax revenue. So this is a major thing. We've talked about this. This is big. If you incorporate then into that, the passive parks that we have, the new park down here, the river park, Lake Louise, these are uh, the, the, the splash pad that's drawing drawing people in this county. This is a major issue and a major plus for Dayton County. Now, we uh, we just saw here, and uh, now go a little bit to what Jerry asked about in terms of funding. We just saw a little while ago. We or, or we were sent a document this past week uh, about the potential of funding. Uh, so, and, 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 and I'm all for it, funding a, uh, a road for the RISE complex uh, to the tune of $500,000. Uh, we're going to, and I'm all for it, build a bridge at the River Park. What was the figure on that one? Uh, we're, we're asking to believe for a quarter million dollars from the state. Quarter of a million dollars to fund a bridge at the River Park. Uh, we spend, and I'm all for it, $50,000 a year to uh, help with the Lake Louise Park. 
Uh, these are things that we're going to receive uh, in multiples back through tax revenues and generating of economic uh, development in Davie County from just this issue of sports tourism. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, the, the one thing that has really bothered me just a little bit as a commissioner is the debt that, Davey, that, that this Davy Youth Complex has. Uh, and, and again, I support $500,000 for the, for the road at Rise. I think it's going to pay for itself. I support the quarter, quarter of a million for the bridge at River Park. It will pay for itself. But I believe that, that we've come to a time where we need to relieve uh, these kids uh, at Davy Little League, Davy Little League Baseball uh, from this debt. Uh, and, and I make no motion tonight, but I want to lay it on the table. They, they have $261,000 in debt that they have to pay back to us if they currently owe 171 on the lights, 90 on that concession stand. Uh, they've already paid, I'm gonna say, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to $70,000 in debt service on the concession stand. I believe we should consider uh, moving that from debt to a grant. Uh, it will pay for itself, just like the road, just like the bridge, just like what we're doing at Lake Louise and actually out here at the park and all of, all of this, all of the recreational dollars that we're investing will pay itself, will pay itself back in the long run. Uh, I believe that, you know, at the new park, uh, we generate revenue, uh, and this is internal, but with Little League football, there's hundreds, hundreds of kids and families that go in there, and yet we charge them to, to play. Um, so I, I, I will leave that one on the table right now, but I think we need to seriously consider this um, alleviating the debt burden on Davy Youth Complex. If you look at the upfitting that they have done to our property, I mean, I, I can't, over the last 40 years, and now with this, with Jerry and his team in there, uh, they're in, I can just tell you, they, they work themselves to the bone uh, making this a better place to play. That photo that you saw of Ashley Field, where they re-turfed the field, re-turfed the outfield, they're in the process of doing that at the other two fields. And that may not seem like a big thing to us, but to kids that top over the top of that hill from uh, counties where, where they're not as blessed as we are, they literally think they they literally think they're in Williamsport. I'm telling you, when they look at the quality of what Jerry and his team have done, and guess what they do then? They keep coming back. They keep coming back. They keep spending money in Davie County. So Davie Youth Complex, Truist, Rise, the Davie Community Park, these are going to, these facilities are going to pay for themselves in the end and I just uh, uh, I don't know how we work through this but I want to lay it on the table as we go into the budget to see if there's any way we can convert that debt uh, to a grant uh, for these kids and, and their families um, and so I'll just leave it at that I'll just leave it at that Mr. Chairman Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome to come out and take a look in person. It's a lot better in person anytime. Um, uh, David and Mark uh, have been folders got all my stuff. Just uh, get with me and come out. Love to have you. Show you what we got. Thank you. I'll be on time. Jerry, thank you for everything you do for these kids.
The next presentation we have is for the capital improvement plan for the county. And uh, I ask Robin West to come forward for that presentation. Tonight, Brad Blackwater and I will be presenting the uh, capital improvement plan, the proposed plan for <laughs> fiscal year 2021 to 2026. Uh, this is our five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, we refresh this annually. We've also engaged with Davenport and Company, as we do every year, for uh, our, uh, their report and their model to help us with this. Uh, so it's important to consider uh, a couple of things when we uh, talk about capital improvement plan. Uh, two of those are the debt affordability and our debt capacity. On this slide, you'll see uh, I've lifted a couple of key items from Davenport's report. Part of this can be found on their report um, on page 14 in your agenda packet. Uh, we've identified some funding sources, and it's important to note that all the uh, uh, funding sources that were identified in the previous plan are also assumed to be available in the current plan. Uh, a few of these are the 6.36 of property tax. So this is equal to the amount of funding that was set aside for debt service beginning in fiscal year 2015 when we started our capital improvement model. Also, we have 10.8 cents of property tax. This is the amount of property tax that was identified and increased in fiscal year 2016 in conjunction with the general obligation bond for the, the new Davie High School. And this tax rate is assumed to be reduced over time and will fund only the high school related debt. Uh, also, we have $300,000 of restricted sales tax for school debt. This is uh, put in this model through fiscal year 2025 and is related to the middle school, uh, Ellis Middle School. And uh, school contribution for debt service or capital, $200,000 per year. This is included in our interlocal agreement with the schools. Uh, as well as uh, a couple of other things of operating revenue for vehicle debt service, uh, general fund appropriation for capital of 485,000, and cell phone rental income of about $46,000. Again, what we included in this model are the same revenue sources that we have identified in prior models. Uh, this doesn't speak to a specific total tax rate, but we have identified the same number of pennies as we identified in previous capital improvement plan. So next we're gonna look at a three, there are three key debt ratios that we look at in CIP. Uh, the first one is the 10 year payout ratio. And our policy is at 55%, currently we're at 81%. What this captures is the amount of principal that we uh, retire in the next 10 years. So being higher is better. So being above that red line is a good thing. The next key debt ratio is uh, the debt to uh, assess value. So uh, right now we have a maximum of 2.5%, so we want to stay below this red line. Currently we're about 1.42% in um, fiscal year 2021. And by the way, all these key debt ratios I'm showing right now already have the uh, proposed capital improvement plan laid into them. Uh, so you can see that the proposed debt in this plan is the light green bar, the dark green is uh, the existing debt. And then the last one that we talked about for the last several years are the debt service to expenditures ratio. So this is the one that we have set at 15%. Right now we're running about 14.15%. So in the next few years we anticipate being over this ratio. And we, we know uh, from talking with rating agencies it's good to even though we have a you know it's good that we have a policy that we set. Uh, we don't prefer to go over our ratio, but since we do, we do have a good story to tell. And the rating agencies are very, you know, they've been accepting of people telling stories. This is one of the most common ratios where local governments kind of get over their, uh, their, their policy. So, but I think that we have a good story to tell. So we're over our ratio. We project at this point for about four to five years. And that's gonna be due to uh, the large project of the detention center. So next we want to go into the specific projects that we have proposed in this plan and Brad will uh, give some more details on this but I just want to point out here that the ones that are shaded uh, we have the community college shaded in blue 
the detention center shaded in um, a goldish color and the courthouse phase one shaded in a green color. Those are to identify projects that we will debt fund. So for the community college and for the courthouse, we anticipate borrowing for about 15 years. And in our model, we've estimated a 4% interest rate on that debt, which is you know, pretty, you know, on the high side, but you know, we, we're a few years out, especially on the courthouse. And detention center, we're anticipating doing a, a 20 year uh, borrowing. So I'll let Brad go into the details. Board, good evening. Uh, as Robin presented earlier, you know, we're taking an annual look at this uh, from year to year. Uh, we'll have another update coming up hopefully this fall, uh, jump ahead of the budget season for next year. Uh, presented to you is in a format you've seen in prior years. Uh, we've got 12 items shown here, 11 capital projects. Um, if you'd like me to go into detail on any of these projects, I'm happy to answer that now. Um, the biggest change from last year's CIP is the uh, movement forward of the detention center. As you can see, uh, we've got $600,000 shown for 2021. We have a request for qualifications going out tomorrow for architectural engineer services. So we will start going into uh, that $600,000 uh, capital here in the next few months. Uh, like I said, any, any projects in detail I can talk to in length, this next slide will show those. A breakdown of each project and the fiscal years they fall in. If you have any questions of CIP projects in the future? the rise in the next five years. Thank you, Brad. So tonight we were just doing a presentation. We will roll these numbers into our proposed budget for our fiscal year 21-22, uh, and uh, we'll ask for a, a you know, to take action at that time. Uh, so just let us know if you have any questions on either the funding or, or the projects now. We'll be happy to answer them. Does anyone have any questions? I know we've all been briefed on this, but does anyone have any questions for Robin or Brad this evening? Very good, appreciate it. All right, the next presentation is the River Park at Coolamy, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Davis to come forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, County Manager, and Attorney. Uh, before we get started tonight, I just want to bring to your attention a little bit about uh, the River Park at Coolamy Falls, where we've been through the last few years, our short-term vision, and where we uh, are heading. And in this, uh, just to bring to your attention about tourism, uh, a lot of that has been brought up tonight. Uh, new interesting statistic has recently come out that um, tourism is now sits top three as an industry that drives North Carolina economy. $24 billion industry in North Carolina. It's been sitting at sixth, seventh, and eighth for many years. And um, I saw Terry Brawley with a presentation just a couple weeks ago. Uh, brought that statistic up and now it sits at number three. So uh, it's a driving economy and a driving force uh, for uh, our county, uh, for our recreation and leisure service profession, as well as to River Park. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our president of River Park at Coolmy Falls, Mr. Addison Davis, uh, give you tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you everyone, good evening. There's been a lot going on at River Park and a lot not going on at River Park thanks to COVID. We've been closed for the past year. Uh, not quite a year, uh, about nine months now. And uh, despite all that, there's been uh, a lot happening. 
and we're hoping, hopefully going to be reopening here in the next month or so. Uh, we're following state guidelines on all of that, uh, along with the state parks and public beaches. Of course, you know River Park has its own beach. And the inland beaches are following a, a pretty stringent set of guidelines. But we're, we're getting there. We're almost ready to reopen. So <clears throat> we had a, a, Paul and I had a, met with uh, Mr. Bone several weeks ago and kind of brought him up to speed, and he suggested that uh, we present to you this evening so you could understand where we are, where we're going with the park right now. Um, why are we here? The big issue is that River Park has been discovered. The park has always been long thought of as that little hidden gem in the corner of Davie and Rowan counties. And what we started noticing in 2018 was that our trash load started going up. It tripled by 2018, 2019, and then when COVID hit, we really began to understand because everyone was encouraged to get outside, go to the parks, walk, don't sit home. Don't sit on your butt and be inactive. So people started showing up at River Park. And so we become more of a regional park. The vision is changing. The concept of River Park within the region is changing. And I'll get into a little bit of that. And because of all of this, the need is changing for River Park. So it's an 80-acre park that spans the South Yadkin River. What's unique about that is that in researching similar situations around the country, I have only found two other parks in the nation that are similar to River Park in that they're located in two counties. Here we have Rowan County, Davie County, and the town of Coolamy. Uh, I found one in uh, Prince George's County Montgomery County, Maryland, over 50,000 acres. The other one I found was in upstate New York. Uh, it was, depending upon how you count it, between 23 and 30 villages, municipalities, county entities, however you want to phrase it, but so large that the state actually appoints people to the board. I was not able to find anything close to River Park being a small local by county park. So we're kind of looking into the future about how we can operate, what makes River Park, what will make River Park work well. It opened in 2003 uh, as the Bull Hole. It's been a gathering place for thousands of years. Uh, for the last 200 years, it's been uh, more well known as a gathering place. What we do know is that whether River Park exists or not, the Bull Hole will always be a gathering place. It just will be because of what it is. It's the only falling water within the region. It has a beach, it has a river, it has water, and it, because of those things, it has become a serious, serious draw. Um, there's, hiking, picnicking, kayaking, all those normal things for a park, we operate as a 501c3. So while Davie County gives us money, Rowan County gives us money, the town of Coolmy gives us money, the town of Coolmy owns, owns the land, Davie County owns the dam, Davie County owns the old bridge site. Uh, as a 501c3, we are what operates the park. We've been doing that on funds from Rowan County, Davie County, and Coolamy, as well as fundraising efforts we've done in the past. So this gives you an idea of the footprint of the park, if you're not particularly familiar with that. Uh, the north side is Davie County and the town of Coolamy. The south side is Rowan County, where the primary entrance is for the park. That's where all the event space is, the parking, the shelters, restrooms, etc. So there's 45 acres in Rowan County and 34 acres in Davie County. This is our board of directors. You see the TBD tag up there on the top of the page. <clears throat> this was submitted before we had uh, the current board approved. 
Uh, this board has been approved, so you can ignore that TBD tag now. Uh, we have a really good makeup of the board. Uh, it is balanced between Rowan County and Davie County. Rowan County Commission, Davie County Commission is represented. Rowan and Davie Tourism, Rowan and Davie Parks are represented. And then we have at-large members as well and the Davie County Economic Development. So we're, we've restructured the board to make sure that we have strong representation from both counties uh, because it is a bi-county park and we have to look at it that way. So <clears throat> we're in a new era. The biggest part about this is that now we are focusing strongly on cross-county and community participation. We have a new board structure. We have new commissions. We have new and improved relationships. We're moving forward. We're looking at the, the way that this benefits regional tourism and quality of life for both Rowan County and Davie County. Um, we recently uh, are looking at the new vision for River Park, phase two operations. Um, the park is included in the 2013 Davie County and the 2017 Rowan County comprehensive uh, recreational master plans. So as we move into our phase two, we're hoping to cement ourselves more so into the master plans for Davie County and Rowan County. An interesting component of all this, in that it's also part of that new era, is that it's part of the discovery of River Park. We uh, have been featured in Moms on Main, uh, it's Our State Magazine, Visit North Carolina, uh, etc. cetera. Um, the word began to get out. Um, the interesting part, an interesting item that uh, we learned December a year ago was there was an internal study done using Google data. And we compared the parks in Rowan County, Davie County, and Davidson County, and what the participation was. And what we found was that River Park, uh, of the, all the parks within the region, River Park was number two after Dan Nicholas Park in Rowan County, which is a large regional park with lots of activities. It was number two in this region for the number of visitors that responded to Google, okay? That's the only measure that we had to go by. But there are a lot of people that, you know, put their, how many stars they want on Google and respond with comments and things like that. The next thing that we learned from that data is that of all the parks in the region, which includes Lake Tomalex, which is a very large facility, and Dan Nicholas Park and River Park, is that River Park is number one by a noticeable margin of the time spent on site. And this is measured by Google because they got you on your phone, right? And they know how long you stay there in one place. So this was a real revelation for us as far as the amount of activity, as well as the confirmation for us, as the amount of activity that River Park was receiving. Then, Along came COVID, and we were watching what was happening, and we realized we had to close the park, so we manned the gate on the 4th of July weekend. That Saturday, we turned away 402 cars from the gate. 402. Of those 402, five were local. The rest of them came from Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill, Winston-Salem Greensboro High Point, uh, Stanley County, Charlotte, Concord, Kannapolis, of course, Lincolnton, Monroe, Belmont, Gastonia, Fort Mill, South Carolina. We had several from out of state. Recently, we had a work day in the park. The gate was down. We had to have it down because we we're coming in and out. The park was still closed. We had cars, three cars show up, two from Mooresville, one from Florida. This is no longer a little park in the corner of Davie and Rowan counties. This is truly a regional park. And we got the word out there, but what we're finding is that people are, are researching, looking for places to go. We pop up in Google searches. 
phone calls come into um, the town office in Coolamy. Are y'all open? We're coming in here from you know, Greensboro or somewhere. We just want to make sure that everything's okay and you're open. That kind of thing. Paul mentioned to me today that they get calls from the uh, RV parks that are here in the county about people wanting to know about River Park, where it is, how to get to it, if it's open, that kind of thing. So we're getting a lot of activity. <clears throat> so with that activity, you can see, um, I'm going to skip over the next one, because we already hit all that. And we're going to go to, oh, let's go here. There we go. There we go. Okay. With all this popularity comes an increased price. The growth has been unsustainable under the current form of management. We have to go to a full-time park manager. That was impressed upon us by Davie County Management, Rowan County Sheriff's Department, and the State Highway Patrol. It's the sheer volume of visitors that we're getting to the park. We need, with that, added security requirements to be looked at. Uh, we are needing to dispose of more trash, more attention to the restrooms, especially under COVID, et cetera. All that that comes with being a larger regional park. So looking at all that, let's look what we have the potential to become. You're familiar with the DFI study that was done, I think it was 2019, um, the Development Finance Initiative, that it evaluated the uh, potential for the old mill site in Coolamy to be developed and what that would do for economic development in Coolamy and Southern Davie County. The end result of all that was that economic development cannot happen in Coolamy until River Park becomes a state park. Now, becoming a state park is a long process, 10 to 20 years. It may not ever happen that we become a state park for a variety of reasons, or we could, but for the near-term period, we need to be able to look at what we can do to move ourselves in that direction, from becoming a regional park to becoming potentially a state park. So River Park is an economic driver for Coolamy now. So if we look at ourselves in this way and pursue this state park status, think about what we can become, it will truly become an economic driver for the region. That's a very important piece of where we're going. So next, the continued viability of the park is very important. Again, whether or not the park is there, it will always be a gathering place. I remember when I was a kid, I was told I could not go there because that's where the narrative wells hung out. That is also why it became a park, why years ago they started putting it together to form a park. So this year we've submitted grant requests to improve the restrooms, to bring them up to ADA standards. Uh, they were built to an old ADA standard. Well, now there's a new ADA standard. We have to meet that. Uh, we are we have a grant coming for refurbishment, updating of the side of the front gate. Most importantly, we have a grant out there, grant request, with the Robertson Foundation out of Salisbury to fund, to help fund, the rewrite of phase two. Phase two is a development of the bridge and the Davie County side of the park and the whole larger view of the park. The grant itself is for, excuse me, the cost for redevelop for developing phase two, rewriting phase two, I think it's been about 13 years since that was originally written, is $30,000. The grant request is into the Robertson Foundation for 20, we don't know what they'll actually fund. That's what we've asked for. So we're going forward with the uh, request uh, to Davie County and Rowan County as budget season is coming together to be able to uh, provide matching funds for the balance of that. 
um, as we seek funding for phase two. We don't know what it's going to be yet, uh, but this is these are the parameters that we've been given. So understanding the funding for the park itself is over time when the park was originally put together, there was an understanding that there was going to be funding from Davie County, Rowan County, and the town of Coolamy. That's happened uh, at various levels historically. Uh, so in 2018, since 2018, or up until rather, the park has done fairly well on a small budget, less than $25,000 a year. Uh, I was talking to the supervisor over at Lake Norman State Park, and he was actually surprised that we were able to do that and that we don't have not one but two full-time staff people on board. Uh, and I said, hey, we've made it work. But again, we're growing past that point. Um, we do not have the means to be self-supporting. So in years past, we've done fundraising to fill that gap. As we go forward, we're looking at being able to do more than fill that gap. Um, Rowan County increased their commitment in 2019 to $10,000 a year uh, with the understanding that they would continue to increase this commitment up to $25,000 a year. Uh, we received $10,000 this past year from Davie County Tourism uh, and Proportionate funds from the town of Coolamy. So we're moving forward on these requests and, and people are really beginning to participate, understanding the scope of what we have in front of us. In 2021, our budget is more than double to be able to accommodate the need for a full-time staff. Uh, to accommodate the budget, we are now going to be charging $5 entry fee for the park, a gate fee. COVID is throwing a little bit of a swing at us because the state is requiring that we limit the number of people in the park um, until they make the decision to ease that. So we may be needing to, our average uh, gate in the beginning of, the, of 2020 was around 130 cars a day we're going to be lot limited to about no more than 100 cars at a time, at a maximum. We're trying to figure out how we can increase that, but that's what we're looking at right about now. So we may still be able to meet that 130 cars a day with in and out capacity, but the state is uh, limit, having us post what our lot capacity is, and we'll have to abide by that for the time being. So, as we are proceeding with all of this, what we're looking at for the future of River Park is a way for us to more formally cement the relationship between Rowan County, Davie County, and the town of Coolamy, and River Park itself. Uh, we're researching interlocal agreements, uh, more of a formal relationship that can possibly take the form of a commission. Uh, there are others in the state that are like that. Uh, again, nothing like we have here for River Park, but there are examples within the state. Uh, I think it's chapter 77 in the, in the state regulations that provides these. There was actually one for Rowan County and Davidson County that was never implemented for High Rock Lake because those two counties border High Rock Lake. So we're trying to see how maybe we can go forward with a, an improved, new and improved, better way to operate River Park as a regional park uh, and as a more formal and collaborative way forward with all of the interlocal agencies that support the park. So that's where we are, where we're going. Uh, any questions anyone may have? I just, um, you, I had a question about traffic, but you've answered that. One of, one of the, um, 
I have a question for you, I guess, and for Robin also. Uh, I'm really happy that Rowan County has decided to uh, be a part of this. Uh, many, many years they weren't. Uh, Robin, do you have any, uh, could you give me an idea, just a general mm -hmm. idea, and if you can't, we can get it at the, at, at our next meeting, the amount of money that the Davie County taxpayers have spent over on River Park over the last, how many ever years? Uh, is, is Robin done? Robin done. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just a ballpark. Yeah, next time, is that working? Okay, I, I know it's several hundred thousand dollars. Okay, thank you, thank you. I just want to, I want to make sure when we talk about collaboration that we really truly talk about collaboration. The citizens of Davie County have over a long term been behind the River Park and will continue to be there. But uh, when we talk about building boards and commissions, I think we have to look at the, uh, you know, uh, we have to look at the, the level of support that Davie County has has uh, had uh, for the River Park over the history of the River Park. Now I would and I and, and so Robin, thank you for that. Uh, I will just say this though: we talked about we talked we've been talking about this for for several meetings. It seems like every time we have a meeting, someone on the passive recreation side is here to talk about the, you know, like the park the complex here just a little while ago. If you take into account the River Park and then the, the, the increased traffic flows at the old Davy High School where the new Davy Community Park is, I think this is a, this is, I'm not gonna, this is a, this is, you would use the term, this is big. I used this earlier with the complex in terms of economic development, but the traffic patterns on that side of the county are gonna be increased exponentially by that community park and by the river park. And so um, I, I thank you for the work you all have done, but I want to make sure that the citizens of Davie County are given uh, the due that they should have because this has been a long-term issue for the citizens of Davie County. And, uh, and it's going to pay major dividends, I think, for this side of the county, especially when we pulled the traffic, the high school out of there, we promised them that we would we would bring something back in to uh, to accommodate the traffic flow that we lost with the high school. And I think the River Park and the new Davie Community Park uh, are right on in doing that. And so, thank you, thank you. I have a couple questions. <clears throat> so if, you're looking, are you looking at just governmental funding and your gate fee? Are you still going to do your fundraisers? Are you going to do the duck race? Are you going to do the catfish fries? We keep talking about those and how they can provide us with funding. The funding that we've received from those events has uh, remained static or decreased, as you are familiar mm -hmm. with. Um, where we are right now is while we want to be able to do these kinds of activities, these fundraising events, because they bring people to the park, mm -hmm. we're, it's a big deal, okay? We cannot do those right now. So we've just been pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off for this year. But well, we, have, we, are, we have in the plans a reopening event for whenever we can have something like that. As a former member of those events, yes, um, I have left sweat, skin, and yes. tears on yes. the beach of that park. Yes. Um, I just hope that you are building a board that if you choose to do that, the whole board is going to participate because it's it's hard when you have a board of 12 and you have three board members that are helping. And I think that's why those numbers dissipated because you didn't have the participation from your board members that you needed and you will know that yes. because you two were highly participating yes but you had others who didn't come didn't sell tickets didn't didn't come help set up clean up or anything so i hope that as you're reconstructing this board that that's going to be the case that you're going to be able to find people that are going to be active and as passionate about that part as i personally am so 
as the, so because it's but it was just after you know getting Channel 12 down there and getting Our State Magazine down there for y'all, it just broke my heart for that gate to be locked. And I think it's a disservice to the town of Coolamy for that gate to be locked. So I hope as soon as possible it can yeah. be opened yeah. because that it's their park. You know, it, it, it's it's the people who live in Coolamy. They they own in their minds and in their hearts. They own that park, so we we need to be able to we, get them we back. Believe in. us, yeah. we fully understand that. <laughs> we got to get them back yeah. in there. Yeah. Anything else? I have three questions. Yes, sir. So you're saying this year your budget's going to be around sixty thousand? Sixty-eight. All right. The DFI study that was done in nineteen, I would. It was that proprietary to DFI? I would hope part of that would be portable to this phase two study. Because that was an in-depth study. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't consider it proprietary. Okay. Right. I mean, they, they certainly can utilize the knowledge that's in that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And my last question, I share my concern with, um, share the concern that Commissioner Jones raised. I would like to understand how much Rowan County <laughs> cumulatively has participated in this project. I'm all for supporting the park, but, uh, you know, Rowan needs we, to be we recognize the differences between what Davie County has done and what Rowan County has done in the past. Uh, I believe a lot of that has had to do with just the way the management of the park was approached. Uh, my goal has been to really engage Rowan County. I'm one of those kids that grew up with one foot in Davie County and one foot in Rowan County, and that's the way I am today. Um, so. I've been leaning on the contacts that I have in Rowan County, because I live in Rowan County now, uh, there to ensure participation in the park. Uh, we have board members now that have, uh, are coming in from Rowan County. That makes a difference to have that balanced board. It makes a difference when uh, the county commission uh, is also participating and understands what's happening with River Park and don't just consider it that place up there at Coolamy. So a lot of this has to do with education and participation and collaboration. And we're moving forward into that stage to ensure that that's where we are, not where we were. This, yeah, sorry. this board, since uh, I've been become a part of it in 2016, has gone through a lot of changes, a lot of morphing. And while our short-term vision, this one to two year vision of restructuring, uh, then goes into more of that long-term air local commission, our focus is here. We're not going backwards. We're gonna look forward. And we understand those differences. We're happy we've worked very hard over the last couple of years, especially through their comprehensive park and recreation master plan update uh, to make sure that River Park was included. It was welcomed with open arms um, as the commission, as I've worked with the commission in my past department in Rowan County uh, for many years, uh, it was important that it was amazing to know how much was misunderstood or not known at all. and. Now that they know, um, it has made all the difference in the world. Am I, am I right on that? Oh, absolutely. No doubt. So uh, we're, we're excited. Um, we're going through a little bit of a transition time as how we're going to operate right now. Um, but you'll be hearing more in the coming year about how we're looking at transitioning to that interlocal agreement to interlocal commission style. And it's very important that uh, as we move in that direction to lay the important ground rules for what that is about. Um, because entering in something like this has not been done many times uh, throughout our nation's history, uh, but I think it has advantageous, uh, advantageous for both of our counties uh, to play a part, uh, as well as the town of Coolamy, and can have la long lasting impacts well beyond our years. I have yeah. one more question. So when I was involved in your events, the Rowan Tourism would not give funding because there were, it did not involve overnight stays. Is that the same or has it changed? Because that was what they told me with the events that I handled that they were not able to give because it didn't same. promote. 
But it is the same. Now, what they can do is, and I have talked with them about this, is that they can do um, capital improvement funding. So they have this batch of money that's based on hotel stays, and they have a batch of money that's based on capital improvements to attract those hotel stays. Okay. One thing that uh, was a real head turner that made Rowan County, that gave Rowan County the what it needed to really turn around was when I talked to Greg Eds, who was the head of the Rowan County Commission, and showed him the data from the Google study. All of a sudden, it went from no conversation to I'll, I'll bring that up and we'll get somebody on that right away. It was not, they were not aware of what River Park really is. I had whole. to do with some on a Saturday, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they have. And the 4th of they July. Have. They, have. they have. They have. Every one of their commissioners has come on a weekend now. And uh, up until last year, um, we had to shut the park down. It was, it was an enlightenment for everyone. All right. We will look forward to moving forward. And not looking forward, not looking backwards. Thank you. Thank you. Good. All right, our fourth presentation this evening is uh, is the understanding or I guess proposal from Cardinal Innovations for some help of children. So, Mr. Bone, please. Thank you, Commissioners, and uh, thank you for your flexibility in, in adding this presentation to uh, um, to your agenda tonight. Um, this is hot off the press. So uh, look forward to continuing the conversation with you as you have a chance to uh, review this agreement in, in, in depth. Um, so just background information. First of all, uh, let me say that, you know, there's been discussion about Cardinal Innovations in, in previous meetings, uh, as well as public comment tonight. I will address uh, ongoing conversation about Cardinal uh, in my manager report, but we did want to Go ahead and present this to you. Um, as you're aware, Cardinal Innovations is a local uh, management entity, uh, managed care organization, uh, often re referred to as LME or MCO, and they focus on mental and behavioral health services, and they currently serve 20 North Carolina counties, including Davie County. So last fall, Cardinal pre prepared a, a plan of action uh, after some counties expressed concern about the provision of services and communicated a desire to cut ties to the organization. Uh, Davie County staff continues to have ongoing dialogue with Cardinal, uh, its plan of action and issues and progress in service delivery. Um, additionally, last fall, uh, Cardinal proposed a, a foster care investment agreement. Uh, and so what we are presenting tonight is a revised version of that. Um, so under the agreement, uh, Cardinal would pay the county a per member, per month uh, rate for each child in the custody of the county for whom Cardinal received uh, foster uh, children capitation payments from North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Um, so counties can use these funds to cover non-Medicaid items like preliminary or transitional care or social determinants of, of health like food, transportation, shelter and more. Um, some counties such as uh, Orange and Rowan counties have already signed the agreement and are benefiting from that. Um, so Davie County staff, uh, we reviewed the, the draft agreement um, and shared some questions and concerns about the, the original agreement uh, with Cardinal. We met uh, last week on April 1st. Uh, staff received a, a revised agreement from Cardinal on April 2nd, uh, and that's the agreement that you have before you tonight. Um, staff reviewed this over the weekend and Monday morning, and uh, we, we find this agreement acceptable. It addresses the concerns that we uh, discussed. Um, the estimated fiscal year 21 and 22 funds that Davie County could receive if, if you approve the, uh, this uh, agreement 
uh, is expected to be uh, total uh, $309,600 for the current fiscal year and, uh, and then estimated for uh, next fiscal year $206,400. So if you approve it at the, at the May meeting, uh, it would actually be retroactive to July. And so that's why uh, the, the amount would be approximately $309,600. So again, we can use, if, if, if the agreement is approved, uh, DSS could, could use that to, to help the children that are in the foster care service. Um, so if executed, uh, the first payment under the agreement would take place in the month following the effective date. So if you approve it in May, then you would receive the first payment in June. But again, it would be retroactive to July. Um, so the, the, the amount that you have that I've just mentioned, the 309, 600, that's an estimate. And then once, um, uh, once the agreement is executed, if executed, then Cardinal could provide a, a more firm amount for that distribution. So um, so this is an additional funding source uh, designed to supplement funding uh, that Davie County Audio re already receives. The goal of the funding is to bridge a gap in supporting the children when they come into the custody uh, and uh, in, uh, when they come into custody disrupt placements. So it is separate and apart from Medicaid services that members in the custody of Davie County DSS receive. Uh, if it is a Medicaid funded service, uh, Medicaid would continue to provide uh, payments for those services. So this would not supplant, it would supplement uh, those funds. Um, and also just want to mention that, you know, approval uh, of this agreement would, does not, doesn't have anything to do with potential disengagement. Uh, it would not preclude David County to, from proceeding with disengagement if, if David County chooses so. Um, so we, we uh, just wanted to present this to you tonight, uh, present the, the concept um, as you have time to review it in more depth. If you have questions, please let us know. And uh, we would like to pre present this for consideration at the May Board Commissioner's meeting. You speak in the mic. I'm sorry. Oh. Could you, and maybe I didn't see your email sent to that. Yeah, I'll call it. If you could, if you could include in an email, if it's not in that email, what your concerns were. Sure. How did they address, yeah. what were the concerns and how did they address them? And then I'm going to assume with our attorneys. Uh, we there's an enforcement mechanism in here that would that would hold them to uh, these contractual dollars that you're talking of, that, that you're talking about. Um, or, or, well, I'll just I'll just look over it. Okay. Any other questions for David uh, and Mr. Bone regarding this proposal? Okay. If everyone could look at it and um, get all their questions answered before the May meeting, we'd like to take this up at May. So we, if we are going to approve it, we could start getting this supplemental funding. So, all right, thank you. All right, next we move to the consent agenda. Anyone have any questions or issues regarding the consent agenda? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. That is approved, 4 0. Thanks. Next, we move to the County Manager's Report and uh, Mr. Bone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I just want to say uh, you know, how Davie County continues to lead the region in COVID vaccinations. Um, I can't say how wonderful it is to see 
the continued great service that uh, our county provides, uh, not only to our county, but to our region. Um, it, it, is really, it really warms your heart to see such effort, such dedication. Um, and again, just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the folks that are making that happen. Um, it, it just takes a team, and our team is doing a wonderful job day in and day out. And uh, it just is a great example of good governance when, uh, when such positive things are happening. Um, as a continued COVID-19 update, uh, as of today, uh, David County had 3,865 total lab confirmed COVID cases, 79 active cases, uh, four current hospitalizations, and 50 deaths. As of April 5th, David, David County has administered over 19,000 vaccine doses. Um, as you're aware, the, the Government Center is now the new home for the Sheriff's Office in Health and Human Services. Social Services moved into the Government Center on March 1st, and David County Health moved to the Government Center last week, as did most of the divisions of the David County Sheriff's Office. So just want to say thank you and give a shout out to all those staff members who made that transition as smooth as possible. Again, uh, HHS and sheriffs for, for their dedication, uh, for uh, uh, all the other staff that uh, support that move as well. So thank you, thank you to all the county staff members that were part of that. Um, as I mentioned, David County staff continues to have an ongoing dialogue with Cardinal Innovations, its plan of action, and issues in progress and service delivery. Um, many of the concerns about Cardinal involve foster care. The state plans to move to a statewide contract for the uh, LME MCO role in foster care effective July 1st of 2023. The provider winning the, the state foster care plan will work uh, with us to manage these higher level cases. The advantages of moving away from Cardinal decreased significantly over the uh, once the foster care plan and Medicaid transformation are considered uh, because uh, again most of most many of our concerns not saying it's exclusive but many of our concerns about Cardinal involve foster care. Um, county staff continues to have discussions with uh, Cardinal uh, about a possible site liaison position uh, for Cardinal within the Davie County Social Services. Uh, the liaison would participate in consultations regarding children who are involved with child protective services or in-home services. Uh, a site liaison has begun in several counties. Uh, Davies County staff wants to ensure the liaison position is appropriately structured uh, for maximum benefit, which is why the liaison position has not yet begun in, in Davies County. Uh, our conversation about this liaison position continues. Um, as we discussed earlier, last fall, Cardinal proposed a foster care investment agreement uh, to each of the counties. Um, we were uh, presented a, uh, an update on that agreement, and uh, we hope to support you uh, in the coming month as you consider uh, that uh, uh, revised agreement. Um, again, counties can use these funds to cover non-Medicaid items like preliminary transitional care or social determinants of, of health, uh, such as food, transportation, shelter, and, uh, and other items. Um, a conversation with Cardinal CEO Trey Sutton and several other counties concerning Medicaid transformation and county disengagement, disengagement efforts is scheduled for, uh, for this week. Um, also, just want to, to inform you that you know, disengagement is a long process. It is about a 12-month process, uh, and there would be many changes within those next 12 months if we decide to move forward with this engagement. Um, it has been suggested that uh, disengagement with Cardinal could be challenging um, after the implementation of Medicaid transformation on July 1st of this year. Um, not saying it, it couldn't happen, but certainly uh, Medicaid transformation um, does um, create further challenges in, in that disengagement process. So we are here to support the, the board as it considers uh, the services of Cardinal Innovations and its uh, 
plan of action as well as your um, desires for improving uh, this service in the future. Uh, just let us know uh, what questions you have about Cardinal and the option of this of disengagement. So um, also I just want to mention that uh, in the uh, consent agenda tonight, you passed a, a proclamation establishing, establishing telecommunicators week. Uh, I just want to say thank you for the te telecommunicators for, for what they do. And um, that is all I have, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Okay, thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Bond? Do we have any old business to come before us this evening? Seeing none, huh? do we have any new business to come before? All right. Seeing none, we'll move to commissioner comments. I'll start with Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I I believe I have said enough tonight. I just want to thank everyone for being here. Thank you for engaging in the business of your county, and uh, thank you for all you do for the citizens of Avery County. Thank you. Ms. Denny? Well, I have notes all over the place, so I'm sure I'll forget to say something that I would like to say, but um, I want to thank the people who spoke at public comments. I love public comments. That's how we know what you're feeling, how you share your opinions with us. And I always like it when we have people to participate. Um, again, I want to thank Jerry um, at the David County Little League because, because of people like him and his crew and the parents and volunteers for our Little League football, the um, parents and volunteers for organizations like Hunters Helping Kids, who this past Saturday had a turkey hunt. And we had some young people in this county who killed their first turkeys for their families to eat. I think that's awesome. And those um, people are all volunteers and they have to work hard to do their fundraising to take care of these kids. There's no greater gift, in my opinion, than we can do than to give ourselves to the betterment of the life of a child. So I, I love it when people do that. Um, tomorrow morning is the opening of our Dade County Senior Games at 10 a.m., I believe. I, Cause I'm, I will be there in the morning at the new park. Isn't that right, Paul? Okay. And um, on Saturday, I'll, all of our fire departments in Dade County will be participating in a water hall test and um, this is a really big deal. They've worked really hard. They've trained really hard. They've spent hours and hours organizing and training. And um, the state will be here to test them. And if they pass this test, all of our ISO ratings will improve. It'll be a great thing for everybody in Davie County because some people will get cheaper homeowners insurance. But it's wonderful to watch all of these guys and girls work together to accomplish this goal and their volunteers. So uh, I appreciate them so much. We also have several first responder families in the county that are enduring some health issues and I won't name all of them, but I would like to specifically name the Ray Moore family because there's gonna be a huge fundraiser for his medical expenses at the end of the month. So if you would like to buy some chicken for Ray Moore and his family, call the Moxville Fire Department or Mama's chick, um, Kitchen and help that family a lot. But um, I just hope everyone had a wonderful Easter and I'm thankful for being a resident of this county. Thank you. Mr. Poindexter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to say a special thank you to the uh, Health and Human Services folks that have worked so hard to get our vaccinations to our, our citizens and some citizens from surrounding counties as well. Um, I'd also like to thank all our employees who have worked so hard for the last year to provide services to the people of Davie County throughout through, uh, the time of this uh, COVID that's been going around. And I'd also like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's good to look out there and see somebody besides just county employees that have to be here. Thank you. Well, I appreciate all the county employees that do come. 
<laughs> whether they're required to or not. But, uh, but I do appreciate the people that come and participate <clears throat> in the meetings. Uh, it seems like the room's full when we have a controversy. It'd be nice if there were people here when we didn't have a controversy. But that said, I do appreciate the people that are here. Um, a lot going on in Davie County. And uh, this COVID thing, I think every day we're one day better to being on the other, closer to being on the other side, thank God. And, uh, but to, to all our staff, it's been a rough 12 months, but uh, we are getting better. So we're gonna look better, look forward to better days. And um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second, all in favor. We are adjourned, thank you. Please come back next month.